for thousands of years, all over the world, the underprivileged have been victims to slave labor. Oftentimes, these workers worked in deadly conditions with little to no pay. There has always been revolt against such oppression. However, most unfortunately end with the heel of the few being pressed down even harder on the necks of the many for control. Change didn't effectively start in the United States until the late 1700s when workers banded together to stand up for themselves in an organized fashion. This demanded immediate attention from their employers. This was referred to as organized labor and was not good for big business. Workers took to the streets to protest valid concerns about how their working environments were unsafe. The workers also wanted a fair day's pay for a hard day's work. This is especially important in the 1850s because of the rise of monopolies. Huge corporations like Carnegie's steel industry, Standard Oil, the railroad, and Coca-Cola are a small example of the boom in these monopolies. In 1881, the Federation of Organized Trades and Labor Unions was formed. Later, in 1886, the two merged to form the American Federation of Labor. This continued to assist the workers to receive fairness at the workplace. By the 1900s, the U.S. Industrial Commission declares that trade unions are good for democracy. Strikes and protests unfortunately still happen today but with regulations on safe working environments becoming ever more prevalent in modern times, the need for unions is fading. Union membership today is becoming a long lost necessity. The youth aren't being brought up in a union-based society. If capitalism continues, the need for unions will be commonplace. The youth need to be aware that unions are helpful. Unfortunately today, Youngsters think of unions as marriage and not as a collective of workers banding together for equal rights.